And good morning. Good morning, Mike. All right. Well, we're absent two of the three. So I have gone through. I think everything's right. Miss Michelle, if you're watching, I tried it. <laughs> now, y'all pray for them. They'll be coming back from their trip. I uh, believe they'll be home tomorrow if I've got my timeline down right. So y'all pray for them and their traveling mercies. And I know we're looking forward to a great day of worship today. As to announcements, today at 1 o'clock at uh, Magnolia Healthcare in Trotwood in Columbia, there will be Carolyn. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Please come. We need lots of voices. <laughs> the more voices, the better. Um, and we have been known to kind of drift off where part goes this way and part goes that way. So please, if you have a free time today, 1 o'clock at Columbia, um, Magnolia Healthcare. And then Christmas worship, 11 a.m. next week. It is a family worship, so everybody will stay in here with us. Wednesday night, uh, we are not doing Wednesday nights for the next two Wednesdays, uh, the 21st and the 28th. Uh, we're out with the Murray County school schedule. We will resume on the 4th. And starting in January, coffee and tea time every Sunday at 10 to 1045 in the fellowship hall. And it's got all that listed there. All right, any other announcements we need to make this morning? Yes. Ethan and Andy have a birthday Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Thank you for that. You're Ethan, not Andy. Have a birthday. You got a birthday? <laughs> 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 Thank you for that. So He's both of them on Tuesday. Well, that's what's killing me. Twelve years old. Now he's hiding like <laughs> don't talk to me. Yes, sir. Uh, instead of waiting till last one to announce the one thing. Oh yes, sir. Absolutely. Any other announcements this morning? All right, thank you. Morning. Morning. I'm going to go a little off script here because he mentioned the apple and the orange and the candy. A few years ago, I heard the call to ministry, and I've been in, at Trevecca in the ministry program there. And part of the thing that they had us do in one of the courses was to go to different churches. And about a year ago, our family walked through the door of this church, and we've been here ever since. And this will be our second Christmas, our second Advent, and our second time getting those apples and oranges and candies and I just wanted to let y'all know how much we love you, how much I love you, how much I'm honored to serve you today and to do my best to uh, serve the Lord and while I'm doing it. So, thank you. I'm going to start now. I almost cried. <laughs> as we turn our hearts towards worship, I invite you to stand as we hear from the prophet Isaiah. Later, the Lord sent this message to King Azaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation. Make it as difficult as you want, as high as heaven, or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused. No, he said, I will not test the Lord like that. Then Isaiah said, listen well, you royal family of David. It isn't enough to exhaust human patience. Must you exhaust the patience of my God as well? All right, then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, 
may find us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to start off with 170. 170. over one page to 171. Thank you. 
candle lighting. <clears throat> God loves the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus. He loves not as we love. God's love is holy, purifying, and excelling. Even when we don't know how to relate to God, he is reaching out to us, loving us with exactly what we need. Huzzah's faithful, faithless and disobedient king of Judah was facing a foreign invasion. The help he'd hoped for from the king of Assyria would not be his deliverance, but divine intervention was on the way. Despite Azaz and Judah's faithlessness, God was faithful and gave the sign of a son to be born, a son named Emmanuel. God is with us. Advent is an opportunity for reflection, for us to invite the Holy Spirit to search our hearts, and for his light to reveal any faithlessness in us. Advent is an opportunity for repentance, a realigning of our entire personality towards God. God is always faithful always loving, always with us. As we travel this final week of Advent, let's make room in our hearts for Christ's arrival. Let us welcome his love and his presence as we align ourselves in faithful obedience to him. We do have a lot of birthdays and anniversaries I cannot miss. I want to back up to that. Today's the 18th. Zachary Beck has a birthday today. Uh, Tammy Stokes tomorrow. Ethan and Andy, is, as it was mentioned, coming up. And Tommy and Tammy Stokes has an anniversary coming up on the 23rd. Tomorrow, Joanne and Greg Niece. Happy anniversary and happy, happy birthday. Well, right now it's time for our uh, offering, if we can get our, if you don't mind. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do want to thank you for this day, or for a chance to gather and worship. We ask you right now to bless these gifts, those that give, and bless the wisdom of this church to know how to use your finances for your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Finish off with 
Michelle is not here, but Miss Miranda is, and she is ready. So if you are three years old through sixth grade, you are dismissed. <coughs> awesome. Well, why don't you turn around and say good morning to one another and greet one another today. today. Let me go ahead and get this turned on before I forget. <laughs> so we got any prayer requests today? Of course, Michelle and James, is they're traveling home. We got a lot of people I know traveling this week, probably with holidays. Um, <coughs> remember them? Any others? Yes, sir. Any others? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you that we have a time and an audience with you. Lord, we want to thank you that we can come before your throne with our joys, with our hearts, and you have an open ear for all of it, large and small. Lord, for those traveling, now and through this weeks ahead, we ask for traveling mercies. Lord, for Brother James and Miss Michelle, I know their trip hasn't been exactly what they'd want it to be. 
But Lord, I ask you to continue to bless them. Lord, um, we want to thank you for them and all that they do. They are truly missed today. Lord, may this week and their time back and all, all this time coming up to the holidays be an extra blessing to them because they pour out so much of their lives to us. Lord, for Shirley and her treatments, Melissa and hers, Lord, for this entire family that it feels bombarded with just things coming from the left and the right, or there are those days that we don't know what is going on and what tomorrow may bring. Or we ask you to give them strength. We ask you to touch and heal and move. Or we ask you to give the doctors wisdom of what to do. Lord, help the people that love them surround them and lift them up. Give them strength in this storm of their life. Lord, help them as they hang on to you and put their trust in you. Not knowing what it all means, but knowing that you are in control. That you will see them through. Lord, for Carly, as her struggle. Lord, we've heard in this other chemo with Bailey. Lord, we ask you to be with them and their treatments. Especially during the days ahead to the holidays. Lord, to give them encouragement to lift their spirits, to touch their bodies. Lord, you made us. Lord, we just surrender it all to you, Lord. All these requests to you. We just give to you and say, you know what's best. You have the healing touch. Lord, you move and do as you see fit. Lord, help us just to hang on and trust in you through it all. Heavenly Father, for all the requests that might be slipping my mind, all the unspoken requests, Lord, you know them. We ask you to be in their midst. Lord, be with us today as we study your word. Open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us. Lord, be with this day, this service, the singing coming up at the, at the, at the nursing home, that you would be in the midst of it all. That today would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our scripture is actually out of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. So... The, the readings of the day led us to Joseph. Now, you know, you hear a lot about all the other people. You know, you got Mary and how many songs are about Mary. Of course, you got the wise men, you got the shepherds. You don't really get to hear a lot about Joseph. So today, we get to stop and pause and look at Joseph. Now, what's interesting is if you're like me, you probably have read through Joseph, this part with Joseph and not given much thought to it. Just kind of the narrative and the story. And well, let's dig a little deeper today, if you will. So Matthew chapter 1, starting with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the Lord, through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and named him, and he named him Jesus. Heavenly Father, again, as we look into your word, open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as I'm reading through that, one thing jumped out to me. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man. Hmm, a righteous man, a just man, a morally right man, a man acting in accordance to the scriptures and the moral what is right and wrong. He's a good guy. We need more Josephs in our world today. We need more people that are in line with the scripture more aligned of what God has for us, what his teachings are, and what's morally right. So here he is. Let's just, let's just break down his story here. He starts off really excited. He's engaged. You know what that means? Y'all show me, show me what you would have if you found out you're engaged. That's it right there. Yay! You know, especially you ladies, when you're engaged, y'all just... Oh, this thing? <laughs> You know, you can't help but see the joy. You know, I, I bet, I, you know, when I started dating Stephanie, uh, we was in high school, and I asked her out, and she, she said, I'll think about it. <laughs> the next day, she walked by and gave me a note, and I went, well, that's not good. <laughs> and she gave the note to me right outside of English class, which happened to have the, the teacher that would read every note if you opened it in front of the class. So I had to sit through all of English class with a note of yes or no in my hand, with her watching me like, just open it. <laughs> I did later after the class, and she said yes. And uh, while I was walking around, one of my buddies said, what you all happy about? Nothing. <laughs> and he went, you asked her. She said, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, he was excited. He was going to be getting married at some point. Well, actually, within a year, if he had been, uh, uh, the engagement started. Because back in their time, the engagement was a year long, right? You went and you set up the engagement. It's not like it is today. It's a very formal thing, such as it's a very legally binding thing. You were considered husband and wife in all things, as one movie put it, except for the things that lead the children. You were legally bound together as husband and wife. And he was excited and life was great. And then Mary decides to take a trip. I'm going to flip over to Mary's story real quick. So... Now, we don't know, you know, exactly, I suppose, maybe some do, I don't, if Joseph found out before or after she went to go visit Elizabeth. I have a feeling it was after. I have a feeling all this transpired and she had time to go off and think things through and come back and then he had time to go, ooh, let's hear the rest of the story. So in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. And he goes on to say, In those days Mary set out and went with haste uh, to a town in a hill in a country 
out of Judea, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. So she heard, I'm going to be carrying this child. And she heard, your cousin, your relative, let me say again, your relative, Elizabeth, has conceived. It's in her sixth month. And I imagine as Mary was thinking of this and struggling with this and going, oh, what have I just heard? She locked on to, and Elizabeth is expecting a child. I've got to go see this. I've got to go. And so she went. And what a cool thing it is for God to be able to give a confirmation for her. To be able to go and for her to see the truth of what the angel spoke. Because it goes on to say that she spent some time there. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. So she stayed there for three months. And I am imagine had three months to digest of all the things that the angel told her. And actually got to watch this miracle happening in front of her. Thinking, and what is God going to do with me? And she makes her way back. This is when I feel like Joseph probably, as it says, uh, when the Mary... When, the, when, the, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child. I have a feeling that once she came back, I don't know if it was one of those things she might have been starting to show. If she said, Joseph, we need to have a talk. Or how that played out. But Joseph got the news, as it says here. But before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Show me the face. What do you think Joseph looked like? <laughs> it's one of those you just keep trying to push your chin up and it won't stay up, right? The shock of what? What emotions do you think he had during that time? What kind of whirlwind do you think was, that when it was in his life? Do you think he had a little disbelief like, what? you ever been that moment where you try to talk and that's about all you can say is <laughs> <laughs> disappointment anger betrayal not knowing what to do i think we've all been shocked with news like that where we really feel like and you finally get a grip and you start to get your traction then you get into that confusion state what do i do what is next? Now, this is where Joseph has a very interesting thing, because I, sometimes, when I'm caught off guard with a, ah, my mouth runs faster than my brain can catch up. It sounds like Joseph is a good, righteous man that actually knew enough to go and take some time. He needed a plan of action. He said he had resolved to do this, which tells me that he had spent some time going, okay, okay, what, what am I going to do? One plan of action. He could have accused her of adultery. I mean, that's in the law. He could have said, hey, that baby is not mine. She could have been drugged in the streets and stoned. But he didn't want that. How do we know he didn't do it? He was resolved not to. He could have said, hey, this baby's not mine, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to go ahead and marry her, and people just think this baby's mine. No, that wouldn't have worked either. He's a righteous man. He's living the way he should. What would the shame and disgrace be on him if he took on this role? He knew it wasn't right. It wasn't his. He didn't want her stoned. He wasn't going to marry her. How could he even trust her at this point? What did she say? Is this even true? I don't understand. I'll just divorce her quietly. Because like I said, it was a legally binding event. And so they had to have a legal divorce. Actually go through the legal process of a divorce. And he doesn't say he's going to be like, I'm divorcing you. Here's your papers. You see that? No. He's better than that. He goes and he divorces. He has in his mind. He's resolved, but when he had resolved to do this, what plan to dismiss her quietly? Why? He did not. He was unwilling to expose her to public disgrace. 
after all, after all the emotions had settled, he took his time and he thought, and I'm sure he prayed about it, and he went, this is what I want to do. This is the best, I, this is the best option I've got. I'll just divorce her quietly and not make a big deal of this and just, and that's when God stepped in. But that's when he resolved to do this. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She shall bear a son and you shall name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So imagine this. You're, you're struggling with this and you're like, you know what? I've got to plan. Tomorrow I'm going to get up, I'm going to do what I need to do, I'm going to divorce her, I'm going to separate myself from this situation, and we'll just do it as quiet as I can and move on. I go to sleep, you have this dream. And when he wakes up, he's told not to be afraid. What not to be afraid of? What did he say? Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. God wants you to go ahead and take her as a wife. For the child conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid of what the people are going to say. Because this is God's plan. This is God's will. Because the baby, the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, And it will bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. And all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. So he's all this prophecy building into this moment. And him going, you need to take her as your wife. Don't, don't, don't divorce her. Because this child, this child is Jesus who will save his people from his sin. Don't be afraid what the people are going to say. Don't be afraid of how they'll look down on you, how they'll, anything they might say or do. Don't be afraid of the shame and disgrace. Because Mary is telling you the truth. I mean, with this angel verifying this, Mary is telling you the truth. You cannot be afraid that she's going to do something. You can trust her. Take her. Marry her as your wife. God is with you. Because as it says here, he, his name shall be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the Christ, Joseph. You're going to be a part of this story that is beyond measure. Now, when we look at this story, what we see is we see the whole package of the where it's going. If this was a good movie, you'd be going, Joseph, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't divorce her. You don't understand. I love how God just let him get to that point and resolve everything. And he went, but wait. This is the Messiah. This is the Christ. This is the man that is going to die for sins. You take this woman. You don't be afraid. And what I love about it is once he woke up and he got that, okay, God, he was at a resolved place. He knew what he was going to do. He knew how he was going to step out and do what God wanted to do. He decided to follow God's plan no matter what. We like watching a movie called The Nativity. And it's fun because you get to see the looks change. The people in the town, as they look at them, like, the way they interact. And one of my favorite scenes is when they're actually leaving for the census and they're on their way out. People are looking at them like, you know, that kind of thing. And Joseph looks at Mary and goes, you know they're going to miss us, right? <laughs> they're going to miss us. He wasn't afraid of that anymore. He had a resolved commitment to do what God had for him to do. He also knew that it meant God had them in the middle of his will, his plan, and his protection. Did he know what was coming? <laughs> no. Do any of us know what's coming tomorrow? No. Which is what I have to ask this question. What does this teach us? What does this teach us? One, I need to be walking around as a righteous person. Somebody who looks at the scriptures, who understands. Because Joseph was righteous. He knew what was true. He knew what was right. He knew what was just. I need to examine the scriptures, examine my life, let God examine my heart and line up that so I can walk a righteous path with him in a right relationship with him. That I can be morally right based off God working in my life, me living according to the way he wants, me acting in accordance to his will. 
or as we like to say here, to walk and be more and more like Jesus. But what happens when it gets rocky? What happens when those days come on us and we don't know what's going on? And we don't understand and we're hurting. You know, Joseph, Mary, they didn't know the full plan. They just knew the partial. They had to put their trust in them. There's been so many times in my life that uh, we've had to put our trust in God. I don't know where it's going. And I, I tell you, the hardest prayer I, I've ever prayed has been, you know what I want, God, but your will be done. Just help me. I, this was my prayer. And my, I said, help me as a husband to help my wife through this. Help me as, as a dad to help Jada through, if that's your will. But we've been in those spots when you're just going, I don't understand. And it's all on us. But to trust in him anyway. Sometimes what comes along in life, <laughs> we definitely don't expect. We definitely don't see. But we got to trust him. So let me give you a little, little lighter tone on that one. I don't think I've told y'all this. I might have. But I used to be a machinist back in the day. We worked in a machine shop and uh, worked out here at Dixon, went to Dixon Votech, which they call it, I always call it Dixon Votech, it's always Dixon Votech, it's not the technology, whatever. Anyway, I was working in a machine shop, and I became a Christian working in that machine shop. Those people got to watch me go from non-Christian Mike to Christian Mike. If you've ever been around people who watch you change from a non-Christian to a Christian and watch your life evolve as God's working in it, sometimes they got some stuff to say. They got some ways they want to be, and I finally got tired of it. And I said, God, would you please send me somebody that I can work with that's a Christian? Hopefully somebody that's more knowledgeable because I'm just starting out. I need some help. Wasn't long, I was laid off, and I, my thought was, God, that was not what I had in mind. <laughs> not what I had in mind. A few weeks later, I find myself working in a machine shop or a tool and die shop in Nashville. Uh, right outside of Treveca, right out, actually outside his back door. And I was surrounded. The person in front of me, the grinder in front of me, the grinder behind me, Christians. I got to eat lunch with Christians. So I got to have some serious, good Christian debates with some Christians at lunch. It was a good time to be around people that wasn't afraid to study the Word and to pray for one another and lift each other up and to challenge each other with good thoughts and discussions. Guess what? Three weeks before, I thought, God, I have no idea. <laughs> what's going on but i watched god move was i in turmoil at that time yes was i seeking god yes like i said a little lighter than some of the others we could talk about but the main thing is i said god i prayed i'm trusting and i don't know where this is going but i want to trust you main thing is be like joseph and don't get rash don't be like mike and let the mouth do its thing before the Mind and heart has time to go, okay, God, let's think. Don't be rash. I mean, he was resolved. He took time to think and meditate and pray. When those times of life come on us, sometimes it's a time to sit back and meditate and pray and go, I have no idea. Brother James and I have talked about this, and he said, make sure when you're in those times, you remember it's okay to talk to God as you really feel. Even if he said, even if it's standing in your backyard, shaking your fist, going, I am so mad, or whatever else you have to say, because at least the line of communication between you and God is still open. And God can handle it. God can handle anything that we feel, that we lay at him. He doesn't want me to sugarcoat it. He wants me to come to him and go, here it is, God. What do I do? Pray, seek God, seek counsel, seek wisdom, and go, what do you want? And when he shows us the path, run it, run it. Sometimes we have to come to a stop as we're walking God's path and go, okay, God, what now? I love it when I start praying for people, and my prayer is, if you don't need to go there, God, shut the door. If you need to go through it, God, please open the door and make it so easy. I know this is your will. When I was looking for a job as a teacher, I said, God, I want to quit praying about shutting doors. Because <laughs> it seemed like every one of them was shut. 
Then I landed where, I, looking back, I thought, well, that's where God wanted me to be. And here's what's interesting about following these trails. If I'd never ended up in that tool and die shop in Nashville, which seemed like a minor step, because now I'm surrounded just what I wanted with Christians, I'd have never met a certain one named Clay who happened to have an adopted child. And in our conversations, uh, we found out Stephanie and I was going to try to go through adoption. Hey, that guy actually put me in line with an adoption agency where I happen, I love how when you say, and I happen to, and I happen to, and I happen to. I happened to meet a couple. Stephanie met this couple. We didn't see him for years afterwards. We had to go through uh, this, this training several weeks long, so we met this other couple who was looking for a child, and didn't see him for years. And I happened to be at the Renaissance Festival, excited to watch the jousting match. And I happened to be sitting there, you know, on the little seats, looking back because this little kid was giggling behind me. And I thought, oh, look, little precious little girl. And they said, Mike, guess who happened to be sitting behind me? The, that same couple. He's a pastor and his wife. The pastor and the wife saw me after years. A couple weeks later, it just happened. Somebody showed up at their church and said, we need y'all to be praying for a family, for a little girl that's going to be needing a home soon. He just happened to think, well, I just saw Mike. Let me give him a call. You see where this is going, right? What started off with, oh, Lord, what in the world is going on? Turned out to be I had a job. I got surrounded by good Christian people. I got led down the road that brought us to where uh, Jada got to come to our life. Because if not for that, if I'd have stayed in Dixon, I'd have never met this, met that. And none of that would have happened to happen. You know, in this story right now, Joseph doesn't really know. But he knows that God is with him. And God is going to move in their life. And he trusts him for that moment and every moment ahead. That's what we have to do. Now, this is a more positive story than some of the other ones we could share, but just know that God is with us. And when we walk those dark roads and we don't understand and we cannot phantom what he's got in his mind. I have had conversations where I've actually told God, I have no idea what you're thinking right now. But I'm going to trust you anyway. Joseph walked through all of that. He had no idea what was next. But he was going to follow God every step of the way. And that is my challenge to you. That I feel like this scripture is. And my challenge for myself. That I can say yes Lord. Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. Lord I want to thank you for this day. Lord, I want to thank you for this godly example in Joseph. Lord, I ask you to help us in our days ahead as we struggle against it all to put our trust in you in those dark days. Lord, again, with this wonderful family that has so much on them, Lord, help them lock onto you and trust in you. And Lord, we ask you to help move and heal and touch and guide. Lord, help us as a community of believers to come together and to lift each other up when we are down. Lord, help us to seek your truth and get resolved in your path that you have for us. Lord, we ask you to be with the rest of this day the rest of this week. Lord, keep us in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. And don't forget your stuff on the way out. We got our fruit. And meet us for lunch. Oh, meet us at one. Okay, I thought you were saying lunch. At, not, not lunch at Angie's, but meet us at one. <laughs> meet us at one. Yes, ma'am.